What's up guys, we're gonna talk about DWAC and I wanna first start by saying I don't know shit about this company from a long-term fundamental perspective, but I've been trading for 10 years and I've seen many market cycles and many market bubbles. I've seen every retail bull trap imaginable and all I'm gonna do in this video is share with you guys what I personally look at when I see this chart. I'm not telling you what to do, I would never do that. All I'm saying is this is what I look for and why I would probably be opening a short on DWAC. So remove the emotions, think objectively, and if you guys wanna learn, let's get into the charts. So I posted on X and I basically put these two photos together. Now I did this last month when it came to Mara, and of course, different companies and different stocks are always going to be different things. But we had the same exact type of setup here on the daily chart. Now, what is a market cycle or a market bubble? Now, these can happen anytime. So this whole you know, bubble that's happening here, this could happen within a year, this could be four years, this could be on an hourly chart, it could be whatever. But in most cases, it's going to happen on a daily and a weekly chart because in order for the stealth phase to happen, which is what we're gonna talk about, the institutional investor phase to happen, if you go to most shit companies, and I'm not saying that DWCA or DWAC is a shit company, but if you go to most of these volatile shit companies on the chart for this like a weekly or a daily, you'll usually see something like this. And so let's just look at what this you know tends to happen. So we normally have four phases. The first phase is the smart money phase, which is the one above my head. This is when a stock is just extremely undervalued. Nobody knows about it. It's a one-off company. For me, my biggest profit, my biggest investment I've ever made in my life, which I don't even know if I've told you guys on this, was buying Moderna at $11 pre-2020. And I had a friend who was telling me, he was a smart money guy saying, dude, this company's so undervalued, I'm telling you, I think this company, now he didn't know what was gonna happen in 2020, right? But he believed and he knew that this company was undervalued. So then during the takeoff phase, this is when smart money and the institutions start to realize that either one, that this is gonna become very public and greedy, or this company is very undervalued. So this could be, let's just say mRNA or Moderna, right as the Rona started, where people are realizing like, oh dude, like this company, if they were to you know, do whatever, or Peloton or uh, Zoom or any of those companies that did well during that time, dude, these companies are gonna actually perform well in this type of economy. And in that, we normally get a sell-off, and then we get pushed into this point where media attention starts. And so if we go and look at Mara first, which we're gonna show DWAC, but this sets up in the same way, right? So you can see that we have this would be our stealth phase. So if I just take this uh, here, this would be the stealth phase back here. This would be institutional phase. And then this here would be our public and enthusiasm phase right here. So this is normally the first sell off and this is called the bear trap. And the reason that this is a bear trap is because everybody who got in on this push a lot of people think that this is the top because if you didn't see the rest of this chart, you see nothing but a massively downtrending, you know, company that now within, you know, just a couple of months is up 150 to 200%. So in most cases, everyone's gonna be like, all right, it's time to get out, time to get out. But instead it continues to push and push. And this is usually when the media gets it, whether it be Wall Street Bets, whether it be YouTubers, whether it be CNBC, like whatever it is, the public starts to get behind it. And this is where we get enthusiasm. This is where we start to get greed. This is where we start to get delusion. And then eventually we hit a top. And so in the case of Mara, that recent top was up here at about $31.50. We get a massive sell-off. Now, this is where denial happens. And guys, I've lost a shit ton of money in my career in the past on, on these types of things. And that's why I'm sharing this with you is like, dude, I've been in the denial phase many times when I first started trading. But when you learn to be objective and realize like, dude, it's cool, it's fine, it happens, then you learn to be objective and, and remove your emotions from it. But we get a massive sell-off and then we get a bounce. This bounce is called the bull trap. So just like all of the bears got trapped here by shorting, all of the bulls now are gonna get trapped here by buying. So what you have to understand, and in, in, in most cases, I'm gonna say like, if you're someone who's trading like DWAC or something that's very, volatile, you're probably a newer trader. And I'm not saying that to 
throw shade or anything. It's just like in most cases, if you've been trading for three or four years, you're not trading something that's that volatile because it's very hard to have proper risk management around it. But the thing that you have to understand is that all of these hedge funds that have been pushing the stock up, let's just use DWAC as this example, because it's what we're talking about. All of the institutions that have been pushing this thing up, they can't just press a button and fill on $100 million or $20 million or $40 million. They have to create levels and they need liquidity, meaning they need you to buy their shares from them in order for them to get out of the position. And so you can see this is a big bearish order block here at 58.65 down to 40.40. This means that within this level, there are a ton of institutional sell orders. Meaning that as the stock, which inherently will move back up to 50 probably, because there's just not enough selling pressure until these guys get in. Once it hits 50, we'll see the selling pressure turn in if all these limits are still set. And if there's enough people buying, we could push through 50 and rip to who knows, okay? But what I think is really gonna probably happen is selling pressure is gonna come in, Big like the big guys are not going to continue to buy. They're selling out of their positions. Retail is not going to have enough to meet that demand. And we're probably going to see a bunch of people get screwed. And I think DWAC will drop back down to about $30, which would put us right here in this capitulation and return us back to the mean, which if you look at the mean is you know somewhere down around $30 to $20. And if you see this, this happens on such small time or such um, many time frames within the same stock. I mean, if you look here, it's not as perfect, but it's around the same situation. This is DWAC, the same exact thing. Smart money, push, capitulation, last bull trap, sell off. Same thing if we just continue to go back here and we look at what happened last time on this push, big breakout, trap, sell off, return to mean. So I'm not saying for sure that this is going to happen, but this is something that you have to realize that the only way for DWAC to continue to run, and it definitely can. I'm the major person who always says, trade what's in front of you, not what you think is gonna happen. But the only way for this to continue to move up is for big money to continue to buy. And do you really think that if you're a disciplined hedge fund, realize this, like a disciplined motherfucker, right? Who's up 190% in a week, or in one week and four days, are you going to continue to throw millions upon millions upon millions into this position, or are you gonna to start to liquidate that a bit? Right, you guys do your own decisions. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. I'll see you guys later.